Ladies and gentlemen, chief executives, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the media, ladies and gentlemen, panelists, Mr. General Director of the National Highway Company of Morocco and President of the International Road Federation, ladies and gentlemen, honorable attendees. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizers of this event, that is the International Conference on Sustainable Mobility, fruit of the partnership between ADN and IRF, and gathering all the stakeholders, whether they are institutional, technical, scientific, entrepreneurial, or athletic. With the success of the first three edition, you have demonstrated your commitment and work with energy and conviction to promote sustainable mobility. It's therefore a great pride to see that this meeting, initiated in 2016 on the eve of COP22, is today a real platform of our dialogue intended to exchange on the policy deployed, share experiences, capitalize on best practices, raise awareness, and finally position sustainable mobility as a top of national priority. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in an unprecedented international context, highlighting the worsening climate crisis with repercussion felt in all territories. No one can now deny it. The alarm bells are regularly rung. For example, the latest IPCC reports announces that the Paris Agreement will not be achieved. And less strong, rapid and sustainable policies and actions are taken to reduce CO2 <coughs> and methane emissions, as well as other greenhouse gases. Indeed, while the Paris Agreement sets the objective of keep, keeping the global temperature increase below 2 degrees Celsius or even 1.5 degrees Celsius, the UN announces that the global temperature has already increased by 1.5 degrees and uh, that despite the effort made, we will reach a temperature increase of 2.7 degrees, which would, which would of course be fatal implying irreversible climate effects. This is also what our sovereign His Majesty Women Sex recalled in his speech at the COP26. I quote, in the wake of successive reports on climate change, one thing is clear to all. The darkest scenarios paint the bitter reality of humanity called happen to choose between the perilous temptation of abandoning itself to self-destructive complacency and the sincere and determined will to engage without delay in practical measures likely to induce real change in the current paradigm that has proven ineffective. End of quote. We are therefore at a turning point where it's urgent to decarbonize the world economy and thus reduce greenhouse gas emissions by half by 2030 and between 62 and by 2050. The challenge is global and it engages all nations and all sectors with gravity and responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today for the fourth edition of the International Conference on Sustainable Mobility, with the team resolutely turned to our action, that of decarbonize, finance, and digitize road sector for sustainable mobility and growth. Ladies and gentlemen, the transport sector is the second largest emitter of greenhouse gases, just after electricity production on an international scale. Transport is responsible for a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions, three quarters of which are attributed to road transport. Based on this observation, the European Commission has already set the objective of eliminating thermal vehicles from its territory by 2050, especially by banning the sale of new fossil fuel vehicles as early as 2035. At the same time, in recent years, we have seen the sector being enriched with solutions for the secure economy, electrification, alternative fuels, with green hydrogen, biogas, car sharing services, car pooling, all these solutions and many others highlight like to transform the landscape. They represent real opportunities for decarbonization, but also constitute 
major challenge affecting infrastructure uses regulations and requiring the development of new value chain. Ladies and gentlemen, Morocco's commitment is multidimensional in the face of the climate emergency. At the international level, the Kingdom has raised its level of ambition, already high initially, to a conditional greenhouse gas reduction target of 45.5% and an unconditional target of 18.3%. The national determinated contribution the NDCs include 61 measures with a total budget of nearly $40 billion, 22 of which are conditional on international financing support. At the same time, Morocco is working hard to implement the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the UN's 2030 Agenda, and as it distinguished itself by demonstrating the real ability to monitor progress. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Morocco is deeply invested in the fight against climate change, despite its low contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. It's worth noting that the Kingdom has undertaken under the vision of His Majesty and is since 2009 the turn of the energy transition, particularly through the national energy strategy promoting the development of renewable energy, energy efficiency and regional integration. This bold and pioneering choice has enabled to the country to achieve energy mix of nearly 40% renewable energy, a target raised to 52% by 2030. Moreover, the Kingdom intends to consolidate its position as a regional leader in competitive green energy by 2036, uh, 35, after conducting conducting a major national consultation which resulted in a new development model whose results underline a strong will for Morocco to ensure itself in an inclusive green economy that brings opportunities and growth and positions electric mobility and alternative mobility as geostrategic priorities. Based on the guidelines of the new development model as well as of Paris Agreement, Morocco has developed a long-term low-carbon strategy published in October 2021, 20, which aims at 40% of renewable energy in the total energy consumption and which set up the electrification of users, the digital transition, the investment in the development of new low-carbon transport infrastructure, and the integration of green and hydrogen for the decarbonization of transport as strategic development axis. Ladies and gentlemen, before launching the debate and giving the floor to our eminent speakers, allow me to conclude my speech on a positive note by sharing with you a key figure that of uh, 20, uh, uh, 12 million jobs in the renewable energy sector worldwide, translated into a net increase of 700,000 new jobs created in, one, in 2021. This is also the purpose of the decarbonization and more broadly the energy transition. And this is the bet we are taking for our country. And now it's time to issue a fruitful exchange and debate. Please stay in this beautiful city of Marrakesh and to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.